I'm here with Tiffany Alberto, the Web Development Manager for Hay House. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Sarah. Hay House, if you don't know, is probably one of the world's leaders in self-development and healthy living authors. Um, there's probably, what, four or 500 authors now on the, that you guys have published over and the years? Adding more and more every day. Every day. Hay House has been responsible for careers of people such as Dr. Wayne Dyer, Dr. Doreen Virtue, Denise Lynn, Jorge Cruz, mm -hmm. and of course, let us not forget Louise Hay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who founded the company. And Hay House has also been a leader in what's called internet affiliate marketing. Tiffany, what is affiliate marketing? Sure, an affiliate marketing program is um, gathering together other partnerships, other websites, um, other people that have a web presence um, to become an affiliate of Hay House. They then promote your books, products, events, anything that you have on your website, on their website, um, and earn a commission or um, a piece of the revenue that's generated from the sales that they refer. And that can be anywhere from products or events, as I mentioned before. It doesn't have to be ne necessarily a physical product. Well, Hay House does a lot of events, like the I Can lot. Do It conferences right. that are all over the country and right. all over the world. A lot of the digital and and they don't necessarily have to have a website. They could have, you know, an email list or, or let's say Facebook, social media, things like that. I'll play a part in affiliate programs now um, as well. Really, if you have an internet presence in any way, you can become an affiliate. So okay. would it be fair to say an affiliate somewhat like being a, a virtual store that or distributor of your products instead of being in a bricks and mortar Exactly. situation yeah, it's on, can, in, on the internet. Right, exactly. And you can, um, and people recommend products all the time. Like you mentioned, Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life earlier. Um, you know, that books like that have um, changed uh, people's life and they write about it, they blog about it, they promote on Facebook all the time Sorry. without knowing that if you sign up and become official, become an affiliate, um, we'll start tracking those links and uh, paying you for, for referring those yeah. types of things. So, how does someone become an affiliate? <laughs> the first thing to do is sign up. Um, there are many different affiliate programs out there, and uh, pretty much any major website is going to have an affiliate program. So there's companies um, that actually manage the, tons the affiliate them. program tons for the brand. Yes, so in other words, yes. Hay House, you have in-house people that manage it, oh, such yes, as yourself yes. early on in our team. Going. Keep it going. Mm -hmm. But there's a third-party person, and what do they actually do? What's the... Lisa. It's their tracking software for the most part. Okay. And if it's if your affiliate program is going to be large, if, if you have, um, you know, I'd say at least, you know, $100,000 in revenue that's going to come through your site over the course of a year, um, then you're going to want another third party stepping in because they'll take care of the billing part of it, the tracking, things like that that, that won't stress you out as much so that you can focus on growing the program and growing those partnerships and really building the relationships and not worrying about some of those details. Well, you mentioned the code. How is it, how do they track the, the sale? I mean, if I'm an affiliate or if I'm going to start an affiliate program and I'm the brand owner, mm -hmm. um, how is it that I am going to know who I pay? And, and how am I going to know that they're selling my product? Well, that's where the you know, third party comes in handy. Hay House um, will provide mm -hmm. our affiliates with the tracking links. So we, we, we give them all the info. The third party helps with that. Um, you know, and we make it easy. Here's the code for the banner. Here's, here's the link that you use. And as long as you're using that link, it's being tracked. It's being tracked in real time, and both parties can see the revenue and the sales and how many clicks and if they're working. And Tiffany, how many affiliates does Hay House have? We have over uh, 20,000 affiliates now within the program. Uh, not all 20,000? Yeah, <laughs> even more have applied, <laughs> um, but just weren't quite the right fit for Hay House. Mm -hmm. So every month there are between one and two hundred that actually sell something on a monthly basis. basis. So, and we have some uh, our reg our regulars that sell you know all the time um, that that can sell you know five ten thousand dollars in a month, and those are kind of our super affiliates. super affiliates, <laughs> right? They they win the gold star. Uh, right. Well. You mentioned earlier that Hay House supports this program mm -hmm. in-house. How do you actually support the affiliates? I mean, is there a role that the brand owner who wants to start an affiliate marketing program has to play in managing the program? Well, What's involved in that? Good, good question. The affiliate program really can, once it's set up mm -hmm. properly, run on its own, but it doesn't mean it's going to grow. Um, it, it is what you make, what you make it out to be. So the more time you spend in it, um, you know, the more time and effort that you put into the program, 
the better it will be and the more it will continue to grow. And does that mean just being in touch with your affiliates? What is that? What's involved in yeah. growing it? Constantly being in communication with those affiliates, providing them with updated information. We add new events, new books and products all the time, um, serving up the links to the affiliates easily, making sure they have information that's relevant to their site and um, you know, giving them even some free content if they want to listen to it or read through something first before they promote that. We, we um, have programs for that, including our blogger program that we've launched, which is kind of um, branched off from the affiliate program when you're just towards bloggers. Um, we have all, all kinds of different What is the blogger content. program? I don't even know about that. <laughs> yeah. The blogger program um, is for if, if you do have a, a blog that is active and and has, has a lot of followers, you can join the blogger program and we provide you with books for review for your for your blog. Fascinating. Even, even blogs. Tiffany, how has the affiliate program impacted the various authors, some of the authors? I mean, it's had a positive impact on their mm -hmm. individual brands? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we have. We manage a lot of authors' websites to begin with, Makes so sense. it was only natural that we incorporated all of the authors into our affiliate program. A lot of our authors have smaller websites, and, and they're, not, they're not prepared or equipped to be able to manage a large affiliate program like that. So they do refer to Hay House to manage that for them. So we have other smaller authors that we sell their products for, and if we sell their products, then, then they're technically part of our affiliate program as well. If, if you find the author on the Hay House website and we fulfill their products, then you can be an affiliate for that author. At, through the well, Hay House program? Through Hay House. Mm -hmm. So we do all the fulfillment for them, um, so we manage their affiliate programs in a sense for them too. Hay House is really a step ahead of what many publishers would traditionally do or the role they would play for their authors. Right. Uh, yes. I mean, it's one thing to like release a book and promote the book and set up interviews and do all of that, but Hay House goes way beyond that type of basic involvement with, with their authors. Right. We take a, you know, marketing to that next level, uh -huh. and um, we pay commission for sales that others refer um, on the author's books and products as well. Uh -huh. And it's also a real service to your authors in helping them build their brands because, I mean, most individual authors are not going to have the capacity or bandwidth, right. I would say, to set up and run a program mm -hmm. like that on their own. Mm -hmm. And, and we have, you know, 20,000 affiliates that, that are, are, you know, ready to go that can promote that book. And different sites have different target audiences. So as new books become available, uh, you know, we target different affiliates, different sites, and say, are you interested in promoting this book for, for this author um, mm -hmm. on your site? And what works for one affiliate might not work for another. So we have so many options out there that we can, we can really make it work for, for any site. I'm here with Tiffany Alberto, the web development manager of Hay House in Carlsbad, mm -hmm. California. And we are discussing the internet marketing affiliate programs. And for those of you who are considering or interested in having uh, an affiliate program or companies and brands that actually have one, um, there are concerns. There aren't thing, does, everything isn't always perfect in any program, so there are possible pitfalls or things to be aware of that might affect or impact the brand. Tiffany, um, would you share with me some of the concerns or actually just some of the things you've learned right. in the process of, as a brand owner mm -hmm. that are important to keep in mind in managing an affiliate program? Well, the affiliate program itself can be overwhelming when you're first signing up. And um, usually you'll be provided with a basic terms and conditions for the affiliate program, a default term, terms and conditions, if you will. And that's what Hay House used to start with. It didn't take long before we realized that we needed a lot more. The form off the conditions. internet wasn't working so well. <laughs> Your basic default just doesn't always work for everybody. It's a great starting point, but then it's you start running into problems and, and you got to start reeling it in and putting rules before it gets out of hand. Now, Cheryl, you helped me with those <laughs> terms and conditions um, as we kind of grew and, and, you know, needed more more and more rules and conditions. It's weird how that happens, huh? Yes. You know, you get successful and then you have to have rules. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, for as long as affiliate programs have been out there, people that I don't want to say are 
um, necessarily breaking the law, but people will take advantage of your affiliate program. And it's not, they're not doing anything wrong if you're not stating that they can't do that within your terms and conditions for the program. So it's the rules of the game. It is the rules. and um, It's like of, if we have a speed limit of 55, you know, then we know we might can go 60 or 62, <laughs> right? Right, right. And, and um, you know, there, there are people that are very good at taking advantage of the program. And um, you know, I would say some of the signs to look out for within your program is if you're looking at your top 10 or top 20 affiliates or maybe even top 50 and you're, you're seeing sites and people that you don't recognize and you go to their site and you don't see how they're promoting, you don't understand how they're promoting your products, then that would raise some eyebrows. Then you might have, you might have to do some researching in your affiliate program and reach out to those affiliates and ask them. The first step is just to ask the affiliates, um, how are you promoting Hay House? And um, if they don't answer, that would be your first clue <laughs> that they're probably doing something that you don't want them to do. Um, we ran into a couple instances like um, typo squatting, which is when um, an affiliate buys a URL that is slightly mistyped from your brand It's a name. misspelling, yeah. It's a misspelling and it's or, people, or, or people literally mistype when they're searching and uh, they come across your site that way. Well. You know, affiliates can embed their affiliate link in that and start earning commission for referring um, to your site simply off of a, ty a typographical error. Type so, isn't it? It's interesting. I, I understand that um, there's a certain like statistics out that people will type in the wrong misspelling mm -hmm. of a certain mm -hmm. word so many mm -hmm. times every so many keystrokes. Mm -hmm. So that a typo squatter is kind of capitalizing on, on that. that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as I mentioned, they're not doing anything wrong unless you tell them unless you tell them that they can't do yeah. that, um, which which we did, we did within our terms and conditions, um, and we started to to reel that in. Tiffany, what other issues and concerns have you run into in the process of managing the Hay House Internet Affiliate Program? Um, one of the other issues that we've run into is pay per click advertising or uh, P Google PPC ads, uh, not necessarily Google, but uh, any other search engine as well. Um, and what's a PPC? It stands for pay per click. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you search something, when you Google something, the ads are kind of the first thing that come up. Um, affiliates are all over pay per click advertising. They will advertise on your behalf as if it's your own ad and link to your site, but earn credit for that referral. They can use their affiliate links within those ads. Um, and the problems that Hay House runs into is when they're using uh, trademarks um, and author names that belong to Hay House. And then we have a problem when we're competing with ourselves. <laughs> exactly. So in other words, you're, you're, mm -hmm. it's at that point diverting sales away from Hay House potentially because the affiliates come advertising directly against Hay House right. by using your right. trademarks. Right, when, when we're using them as well. That's yeah, where exactly. it becomes an issue. Um, and we work with affiliates that do pay-per-click advertising. It's not that we don't allow it at all. We do. But we work closely with those affiliates uh, to make sure that we aren't bidding on the same keywords. The last thing we want is to compete against each other. We well, want our affiliates to expand the business, not compete against yeah. Well, that raises another interesting issue, which is this keyword advertising, which is mm -hmm. um, a lot of people call it Google AdWords, and that's been mm -hmm. a huge issue uh, legally. There's been a lot of lawsuits about mm -hmm. it over the last four or five years. And, um, but it's interesting about that when you say competing against it, that's one of the issues with keyword advertising um, right. when it gets into the use of, um, say, a Hay House or an author's trademark. Right. as the keyword that's being bid on at Google. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. yes. And, and then, um, you know, Hay House ends up paying a commission for, for those referrals. And the uh, pay-per-click advertising really can get out of hand really quickly. Um, as those ads continue to do better and better, um, those ads move to the top of the search engines, and um, they can really uh, appear to be your ads when, in fact, they're not. And the difficult part about affiliates is that they have the power to, to change those links to land on someone else's site, if you wish. So you, it's very important to work with the affiliates that are doing these types of advertising, put clear rules and boundaries in place that they follow, and be in touch with them on a regular basis. 
um, to make sure that they're driving traffic to your site in a way that, that benefits, benefits everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, we're touched on the PPC and a little bit on the keyword advertising. Uh, the thing about the keyword advertising, now when someone looks at, does, types in a keyword to mm -hmm. search, let's say I type in Hay House into the Google search engine, um, I'm likely to see Hay House come up. Mm -hmm. But if I see other searches or results come up for a third party site that's unrelated to Hay right. House, for right. example, that might be an indication they've bid on a keyword using mm -hmm. the term Hay House, right. which is a right. trademark mm -hmm. or brand name, mm -hmm. to purchase that term as a right. keyword on the search engine, right? Right. right. Um, and the, this is what many people don't realize, I don't think, is that the, the people, a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal? I've seen a lot of recent commentary on, on the, in articles and even mm -hmm. law professors saying, well, what's the big deal? How does it hurt? It's the brand owner ends up bidding against the third party to use its own trademark mm -hmm. and it drives up the cost that right. is paid to Google because correct. it's a bidding situation. You're actually right. bidding on using your own name. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And that's what you want to avoid. <laughs> and Cheryl's also helped Hay House in that area. Um, um, by submitting our trademarks into Google and um, you've helped with us with that. Um, and making sure that, that, that those main trademarks are under control. Control, yeah. And uh, we, we do our own Google searches all the time, um, checking for keywords and looking for, for others that, that might end up posing as a threat um, to Hay House versus benefiting yeah. Hay House. Yeah, when they're using a, a, a Hay House trademark term and they're, they're turning that into something that advertises their own site, that Hay House doesn't endorse it, Hay House isn't a part of, um, then it can become, uh, like you said, a, a bidding war um, against a term that, that Hay House owns the, the trademark mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you, Tiffany, and thank everyone for watching. For more information, please check out other content at www.brandaidwithane.com.